getting a drawing underway. A quick drawing, slow drawings, it doesn't matter. So whatever step. I mean, with these I've actually just um, with, uh, now I'm talking about three-dimensional geometric shapes. But there's the that was the first mark I made. Okay, just to, you know, that was a measurable thing. I mean, very easy. I'm really able to the stick, and I'd be able to work out where the stick was relative to the feet. Was it up here or down here? Uh, what that length was versus that length versus that length. So this is not something you're going to draw. It's all negative space, but it really helps with I mean, this case because it's a stick. If the pose did not have the stick, then probably I would have taken the line straight down to there. And that would have been the triangle. So it would be that length, it would be that length. And then you can start working within that. You can work off the segments, as in measured drawing, to determine whether the end of the buttocks turns into the small of the back, whether you know, the shoulders are, where the head is, etc. Top of the head, but not of hair, whatever it might be. The uh, elbows, these can all be notched off against these lines that you put in. Um, so, that's the two dimensional uh, geometric shapes. That's the end of that, except I hope you all will continue to use them. Now, three dimensional geometric shapes. Uh, we all know, and I know you've worked with skeleton quite extensively, and you all did very good work, as far as I can remember, uh, as far as I recall. And um, that, so that's definitely a way of looking at the figures via anatomy. So you, there's an understanding of the skeleton that's probably the most important uh, because it's the, the framework, the armature that carries the, the, the figure. Uh, but one realises, of course, that except in a few spots, you know, like the iliac crest and the you know, various bits of bone that stick through, depending on who the figure is that you're looking at, particularly in the case of ectomorphs. Michelangelo is interesting because he did uh, endomorphic figures, that is, bulky figures, as if they were ectomorphs. In other words, like that, as if they were very lean figures. So ectomorphs, those people who, you know, uh, mountain climbers are ectomorphs, generally speaking, incredibly cut muscles, not very heavy. Um, and uh, endomorphs, yeah. like footballs are endomorphic. So Michelangelo managed to put the two together. So, um, uh, in his case, we're looking at uh, an imaginary approach, really, to uh, the anatomy that underlies the skin. But in the end, you, you are looking at muscles in the main, you're also looking at you know, subcutaneous fat, deep fat tissue, you're looking at uh, obviously the nervous system, the veins, all these things are in there. Do you need to know all about them? Do you need to have a kind of a medical knowledge of, uh, of what's happening underneath the skin to be able to draw the figure? I think people who do, uh, sometimes, as Da Vinci once said, if you, uh, if you draw all the muscles correctly, you'll, you'll end up with a figure that looks like a bag full of nuts. And uh, what he meant was, you know, don't, don't try and show the anatomy, even though you're very keen on anatomy, because it'll make the figure look too... Um, it, it'll lose that kind of overall form that you're after, and in fact, is what you see. You know, if I'm looking at Liliana's leg there, there's a number of different muscles doing all sorts of things, but I'm really only conscious of one surface, and there's little subtleties going on. But uh, if I can get the, the overall form, these kind of cylindrical things that I'm looking at here, that, particularly the taper, you know, not, not a straight cylinder, but a tapering cylinder, it'll probably be a much better understanding of the form than trying to work it out by all the muscles and bones, etc. that are underneath. So, um, I'm not uh, dismissing 